All right guys, getting ready to go out on a camping trip. I'm actually gonna take the Tundra and I'm gonna take it just like this. Uh, I could throw like a sky camp up on top or whatever, but I'm not. What I have here is I'm gonna sleep <laughs> under the Diamondback. I got a cardboard box because I spilled a bunch of diesel in here and I don't wanna get my sleeping bag dirty. But basically other than my bag, I'm not bringing everything. This is my daily driver, my prepared daily driver. So I do have some stuff under the seat. I'll probably go through that with you. Maybe do a whole separate truck gear, kind of updated truck gear video. I'm gonna new, do a new get home bag video, but that's it. This is the camping trip. I'm going out with Talon again. He's like, I'm going out on a weekday here. He's basically my only friend that can regularly just go camping on a weekday now and I can't I'm not gonna control what Talon brings so he'll he'll bring whatever he brings but I, I heard you guys saying I bring too much gear I bring too much so I'm bringing nothing I'm just taking my daily driver out no tent nothing so that's it uh, kind of for fun I like doing this kind of stuff honestly so kind of for fun but kind of just a complete opposite of some of the other more gear centric videos that I'm doing lately, but I'll be doing mostly gear centric videos in the future. Quick update, slabs ready to pour. It's gonna pour here in the next couple days, I think. I'm gonna get this paved, and then we're off to the races, boys and girls. We are off to the races. I'm running late as usual, so I'll catch you on the road. Can I just get a 20 piece chicken nuggets? I do love this truck though. Get a little gas, got a little Mickey D's, then head up. And if anyone was ever wondering, Tundra does have a nice 20 piece nuggy holder. I don't think it fits. No, not in the back one. Perfect, perfect right here though. Sun is harsh, but it's kind of funny. This is like the first time that Town's truck doesn't have a tent or the Kimbo on it. Yeah. There's Talon. Uh, yeah, the Kimbo's going on it soon. And then we got the Tundra with nothing on it either. Just diamond backs on both of them. Axis cab and basically the Tundra Axis cab. So long bed boys. Talon says he's basically doing the opposite of me. And he brought like a bunch of stuff bougie camping so we'll see what he's got set up i literally i brought a propane through a propane tank and a literal cardboard box oh my gosh <laughs> that's all you have um this really is for because i spilled a bunch of diesel back here so i have a sleeping bag and i do have a pad i brought a pad too so that's just to not get that stuff filthy this is it this is, this is it, guys. <laughs> you got a nightlight at least. I got a nightlight, got the Diamondback nightlight up here. And then I got some stuff under the back seat. But I kind of prepped this video earlier, Town, saying just like, I'm grabbing my daily and just whatever is in it. So we're gonna talk about kind of what's in it. But man, the Tundra is nice. Just ripping down this random fire road out here. This is down kind of south of where I usually go, but. Yeah, we're gonna go find a spot, be super casual.
All right, so we found a little spot here in the trees. Talon is setting up his uh, luxury vacation spot. <laughs> if you want, I don't think I'm gonna go through like details on this because we're keeping it Spartan. It was kind of a weird, weird one to do like a minimal Spartan overland trip because Talon, kind of unbeknownst to me, had the opposite idea. So it'll be a, it'll be an eclectic mix, but we both don't have rooftop tents. So if you're in for the no rooftop tents thing, that is this video. So I'm doing things like they do them down in San Francisco, cardboard box, baby. I don't know if I'm allowed to say that with the, the PC police, but I did cut, cut a cardboard box. I just, you know, had some trash that I put in here because I spilled like a bunch of diesel in here and I just didn't want to get it on my stuff, you know, cause I'm bougie. So I forgot it is, it is in the spirit of this video. I meant to bring a pair of boots and I forgot, but I do have an extra pair of boots. I actually think I talked about it in a recent video, a pair of Keens in, under the back seat. This Tundra, even though it has a small back seat, has a surprising amount of room under the back seat. So basically the only things that I threw in my truck that isn't always in here is my camera gear and this sleeping bag. This is like a Coleman cheapy sleeping bag. I don't even know if it's like, I think it's like a 15 degree bag actually, cause it's really big, but not down, not super nice. And then this, cheap like $70 trifold pad. So that's it. I'm gonna be sleeping under the Diamondback. I'm not sure exactly. I'm gonna to toy with some setups. Talon has slept under the Diamondback before. Actually, I, I, I feel like I have. Like it might've been in the Super Duty. Definitely wasn't in my short bed Tacoma cause it's too short, but this is about six and a half feet inside. So enough room for, for me, but I may, I may like crack this setup. Fortunately, I'm here with Talon. If I was like out in the <laughs> middle of nowhere by myself, I'd probably be a little scared to sleep in the Diamondback because uh, I'd be scared I'd get like locked in or something. But I do have tailgate release on my key fob. So I can open it with that. And then, you know, I could just lock the, the little guys open if I was really, worried about it, but we'll figure exactly that setup out later. And then other than McDonald's, that's it. So let me set up my bed while, while Talon gets the, the condo set up. All right, we'll just slide that in there. And we're done. Honestly, rooftop tents are pretty easy to set up, but I think that's, I think that takes, takes the cake for setup. I'll probably sleep head this way. I got the 4T crossbin across the side, but still, you know, probably have 16, 16 inches above there. And then however, you know, eight, 20, 20 inches roughly here. So as I mentioned earlier, I do always keep stuff in the bag. We got a bunch of stuff here. I got some snowboard pants, just a little insulation in case I get trapped in a blizzard. Uh, kind of a boonie hat. Oh, I got a regular hat. I got my old pair of, these are Keens in here, socks, I think I have some gaiters, beanie, stuff like that. On this side, I got a little bit of recovery gear and whatnot in the back. I'm not gonna get too detailed because I think I'm gonna do a full, full truck gear video, kind of like good winter items to keep in your truck video. Got, you know, headlamp and some other odds and ends loaded out in here. And then the sleeping bag over here, have some random gloves and stuff that are just kind of always on the ground over here. And then you'll see under here, if you watch uh, my last truck gear video, it's pretty much this loadout. So you'll know I, I didn't cheat and like load this thing up with anything. This is my get home bag. Lots of, lots of random stuff in here. I could really just live off of what's in there, probably without bringing anything else. Med kit, the only difference is I swapped out, I had some backpackers pantry in here, swapped that out with some peak, so I got that, I got a little jet boil. I also have some just cheapy top ramen, water filter jacket. Usually keep like a couple beanies. This is like, I have a little more than one pair of clothes, I guess back here, just in case 
I get stranded with Ashley or something, I always have kind of enough to kind of outfit two people. And then I always have this kind of towel that you could kind of use as a blanket also to protect the back seat, but also, you know, you never know when you need one of these little Turkish towels. And honestly, that's pretty much it other than what's in the back here. So this is the cross bin, some recovery gear. I actually fortunately always keep a chair, a little generic Helinox here, shovel, ax, rope, recovery stuff, extra gloves, miscellaneous tie down, some bolt cutters, tire repair kit, all kinds. I got actually another jacket underneath here just to kind of keep things from rattling around, old wax canvas jacket. So really, more than I need, but I'm kind of looking forward to, I'm looking forward to this nice little cozy den in here. Oh, I did bring a pillow because you know, let's be serious. Might as well be a little bit comfortable. Let's go check out Town's got over here. Oh, it's got a floor in it, like full, full hangout area. Sorry guys, I, the, the beginning of this video I didn't know. I didn't, I didn't intentionally mislead you and be like, I'm going to rough it in the bed of the tundra, but really <laughs> being out in a, in a thing. But that's how things go. You know, you go camping with friends. I, I camp for the social aspect of it, just to, just to have fun, to get out there, to get out of the house, to get off of, off of the computer, off of the cell phone. While I do miss my family terribly, love you, Ashley, even though she doesn't watch my videos really. It's fun to just get out. Um, there's a lot of other, there's a lot of other life changes happening. Well, not big life changes, but there will be some vehicle vehicular changes tomorrow. I think I'm buying two cars, not like brand new, like kind of cheaper, cheaper cars. I found a crazy deal on a on an LX570. I'll talk more about this later. But I, ever since selling my LX, I've I've missed it. And the Sequoia is good, makes a lot of sense, really works well for, for everything. It is no 200 series Land Cruiser. And ever since I sold the LX, I've just missed it. And I drive the Sequoia quite a bit because it's, it's what I usually drive when, when we're out with the family. Also, I'm doing a little no shave November too. So I, I don't know when I'm gonna upload this video, but tomorrow as I'm filming it, I'm gonna go buy an LX570, I think. I'm pretty sure, I test drove it today. It's, it's in exterior, cosmetically, it's in rough shape a little bit, but seems pretty sound. So probably gonna get that tomorrow. The other one I'm gonna keep a little bit more of a surprise, but it's a major, it's more of a major project that I'll be documenting the build of over the next probably many months, honestly. But I'm gonna buy this thing sight unseen. It's in Florida right now. I'm gonna have it shipped out to me. I hope, you know, I've had video walkarounds and everything. I'm getting it from a little dealership that has like a, a 90 day engine drivetrain warranty. So it's like, hopefully it works out. Hopefully it's it's good, but it's basically gonna be like a full teardown and a full custom custom build of this thing that I won't spoil too many details. So that's kind of what's going on in my life right now. A lot, a lot of projects. Ashley probably deep down inside hates me for, for taking on all these new projects, but I, I figured they'd be fun to do. The, the second one I'm talking about is really, I, I'm getting it for the family. Uh, and then the, the LX, honestly, I'm getting for the family too, because this is really my daily when I'm just solo. So it's all family stuff. It's all family stuff. So that's what's going on. Um, I'm all set up, but I may help. I may help Talon because again, he's setting up all kinds of stuff. He's got his whole the whole bed of his truck uh, was full. Again, I'm not going to go. I'm not going to go too much into into detail for any of this stuff because I'm sure Talon is going to thoroughly walk you through that on on his video, which is probably let's be real, it's probably already posted and up on his channel. Though the last one we did together, I was first. Yeah. The well, last one. Two days. Oh, all right, Talons is gonna be first. <laughs> so you'll see his on his channel, uh, a video or two, but I'll try and turn this out pretty quick and get it up on the channel. But yeah, I'm not sure what we're doing for food yet. I'm either gonna just boil some water in a jet boil and make a peak, or I think I did bring my, 
my jet boil Genesis because Talon wanted to borrow it. Cause again, he's kind of going all out and cooking. So I may just end up eating, I may just end up eating his food because why, why waste food if Talon's already, already making it, but I'll, I'll get my stuff out just to show you like what it would have been if, if Talon wasn't here, It'd give you the full effect. So yeah. Oh man, I've been filming for nine minutes, nine minutes of talking. Good. Goodness gracious. So we'll talk more. All right, so I'm in here pretty cozy with the the things popped. Talon and I were saying we should like figure out how to make a tent out of this when both of them are, are popped up like some mesh, like bug netting or something. But plenty of room in here. I was just uh, chilling, watching Talon go through his, his plethora of gear shooting directly into the sunlight is always the best so we got the crocs crocs off tailgate here nice little hangout spot so i just take a nap now and hang out until talon cooks me some dinner i think actually he's setting up the fire pit so i'll get my chair out all right talon was for real he's got dual dual overhead lights going on up here we're shooting a production feature film if you're wondering we got like light guys gaffers and stuff they're behind behind no i'm just kidding these are from uh free spirit though again more info in town's videos i'm not gonna cover them too much i was just i kind of nothing against free spirit free spirit is a great company and these lights look like great lights but i just hate this style of light you know a dozen companies make them i'm just like if I'm out camping, no, Town's like, man, quit bashing on me, dog. No, no. <laughs> I'm just like, I don't want a bunch of spotlights when I'm out camping. We'll do it because this is kind of, ta this Talon's, Talon's video is overkill camping, so we'll have some of it. Yeah. I was going to say, for the record, I would never bring all of this stuff out. Maybe if I was camping in the same spot for like three days, but this is my last time camping without my camper on. That's going on soon, so I just brought out the works to go diamondback budget really no budget camping <laughs> and then just like full ridiculous overblown hey that truck's expensive <laughs> um but yeah but we were kind of joking but again i don't like I, I like headlamps i like lights off of trucks little lanterns and stuff the light of the fire sweet but these ones i don't know like not a fan of them but i was joking because they keep i saw like some company it might have been goal zero like launched a new one and it was like the the, the they were tied like 10 foot height or whatever and I was like, you know what? If anyone, if like a, a guy wants to get on board, what I think would be kind of fun, I'm not gonna pursue this, at, and I'm, I don't have a patented or anything, so you go for it. But you make a little like float, like helium or hot air balloon, and you get a little tether, right? You know, you tie the tether on, you like launch the balloon up 30, 40 feet, and then you got the light like up there, like floating around, and it's kind of like the sun or a full moon. I wouldn't get that either, but, <laughs> but that would, that would be a little more interesting, I think. So Talon's getting this set up. This is actually, uh, I think it's hooks up on the other side. Oh yeah. Yeah. So this is the, this is a, this is what I actually like a lot when I'm not doing like super easy, just boil water meals. The jet boil Genesis ba base camp's cool. Double burner. It has, you can add another like jet boil attachment. It comes in a self-contained thing, basically this size with pot, pan, everything you need. It has a little windscreen even right here that we can set up if it's windy enough, but that's a cool setup. We'll watch Talon, we'll watch Talon cook. But let me show you, let me show you what would have been if Talon wasn't cooking for me. Again, I just showed you this under here, but just the jet boil. The jet boils, this is an old one, back when they, you could get them with the, the multi-cam. You get them, I think everyone at this point knows what a jet boil is, but just in case you don't, you get the small canister and everything fits inside. It's all self-contained little stand the burner adapter that's actually so you can put a little pot on top if you didn't want to use the cup but 
This is an amazing unit. Hashtag not sponsored by Jetboil, even though I just realized we're talking about two uh, Jetboil products. This one I've had forever. I have a couple. I have like the Mini Mo and whatnot. So that's a, that's a cool little setup. So I was just going to make some water in there. Careful, this is washer fluid, not Gatorade. So more on that later. So that's what I, I would have done. Let's see what we would have had here. Chicken, coconut, curry. That's what, I mean, probably, probably, probably would have been better what, than what Talon's gonna make. And then the strawberry granoles. Okay, okay, but Chef Talon, you gonna break it down for us. Been sitting around the howl. This is actually Talon. Talon got in on the pre-order, so this is his production unit that he bought. Production, baby. 007. There's a few small changes from that pre-production unit I was using. Uh, we only brought one propane tank, so we're going to disconnect it and cook now. And by we, I mean Talon. can actually see the city lights down through there. I rarely camp in places that you can see city lights. That's kind of interesting. Talon kicked on all his lights. This one actually has a has a pretty nice use case here. Shannon, some light over the cooking area. Alan, what are you cooking? Carbonara. <laughs> we got. I chef. don't even know some beef penne, creamy tomato stuff. It should be good because it's gonna be a little cold and it'll be a nice hot meal. All right, my toesies are getting cold. So one of the many many good reasons having backup boots in your truck. So in my backup boots, I stuff a pair of gaiters. Gaiters are extremely handy in the snow. Keep snow from getting into your boots. If, if it's cold and snow gets into your waterproof boots, then you might as well not be wearing waterproof boots. It gets freezing cold. Uh, so trekking through snow gaiter is hugely important. What I also have in here are a bunch of old hand warmers and foot warmers and stuff. I kind of forgot those were even in there. Let's see, this is like Christmas. It's like Christmas morning. Oh man, you can fit a lot of stuff into a pair of boots. So these are just a pair of old Keens that actually my dog chewed up. When Atreyu was a puppy, he chewed, he went through a shoe chewing phase. Okay, I got a ball of clava here with a pair of snow goggles in it. I'm ready. I live in, I live in the mountains of Colorado, guys. I don't know if you know. So I kind of have cold weather gear. Oh, some little fleece fingerless slash mitt gloves. Those are nice. Man, another pair of nice pair of wool socks. So that's it. All that, all that fun stuff jammed into my backup boots. So I'm gonna put my backup boots on now. Crocs, they just breathe a little too much. And that's the story. Got some seasoning, some onions, some beef, yeah. some water boiling. This is gonna be a pretty good one. I think it's gonna be high on your scale. All right. I mean, it smells pretty good. It smells pretty good already. Okay, 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 okay. Master Chef, man. Trying, man. This is uh, Talon's uh, great grandma's recipe, passed down through the years. That he's he's added his own little flair to. What was her name? Granny Fresh. Granny Fresh. Granny Fresh. That's some bone apple tea. Good job, Talon. Oh, thank you. I slaved. Good job. Fresh homemade fire. Homemade food. Living life. Lights, like we're in a Walmart parking lot, it's dope. <sighs> All right guys, many hours later, by the howl, getting a little cold now. And I was like, I want a snack, but I don't want to make anything. And I told Talon, oh, I got some ramen. And he was like, ooh, ramen. And I got, <laughs> I got the ramen. And I was like, I'm just gonna eat this dry and you know, seasoned, seasoned it with the packet and then broke it up and then shook it around so it mixes up. 
and then I was e- eating it in front of Talon. That's psychotic <laughs> behavior, dude. I, I've never heard of that before. Mike claims that people do this, but I've never heard of anyone doing it and I've never seen anyone do it. So we're both in like our own little twilight zones where I'm like, what? You've never, you've never heard of that. Like I would understand if you've never done, but you've never even heard of it. And Talon is like, no, dude. never. And he's like, as a matter of fact, that's like crazy. <laughs> that's crazy. And I'm like, wait, am I crazy? Does nobody do, does nobody know about this? Does nobody do this? I mean, I grew up eating a lot of ramen as a kid. That was just like cheap. It's accessible. I'm like, I eat a ton of ramen. I've never done that. <laughs> but I'm like, I swear, like, I know some other people do this. And I thought just like more people knew about it to the point where like, and granted, I'm Asian, but I, I didn't, like, grow up in Asia. But, like, I lived in Hawaii for a while, and maybe I'm mixing a bunch of different memories up together. But I just thought everyone knew about it. Maybe. And, I'm curious if anyone else has heard about that, because that's crazy to me. <laughs> like, to the point where I remember, like, at my school, there was a rumor going around that, like, if you ate these raw, then you got worms. And everyone was like, oh, I guess I have worms. But... <laughs> <laughs> All right, let us know. Let us know. All right, well, you learn something new every day. My mustache is showing up pretty good. I need to blow my nose a little stuffed up. Uh, Talon went to bed. I was just finishing my ramen snack by the fire and just brushed. So now I'm going to get in here. We got the diamondback light underneath. And basically, I cracked this one, well you can't really see what I'm doing, but I cracked, the front cover's just cracked barely open, and I think I'm gonna just do the same, crack the back cover. And you can actually manipulate the diamond back clasp from the inside, so if it's not locked, I'll be able to open and close if I wanna close it all the way from the inside. So I'm gonna put my camera away, so I probably won't film this, but I'm gonna get up into here, I'll close the tailgate, and then I'll close the top, and I'll be in my little coffin of comfort. And we'll see, hope it doesn't get too condensation-y in there. <laughs> All right, good night. Ah, <sighs> good morning. Not a bad little sleep. Mattress was a little firmer than my preference, but it was okay. Talon, probably pretty warm in there with his little diesel heater set up. I gotta take my morning pee. On my lens. All right, we are boiling. It's the advantage of jet boils. Still, just they boil so fast. Oh, dang! I don't have a spoon handy. I think I find one. Basically, mix that up, seal the bag, wait ten minutes. And as always, do more than your part. Uh, cleaning up the site around you. Like, I gotta always clean up after Talon. He threw his pack of cigs over here. This guy's twisted tea when he was done. He just chucked over here. No, just kidding. I wasn't Talon. Talon is great about cleaning up trash just like I am. But just kind of look around. Uh, always, obviously, clean up your trash. Don't be an idiot, but go above and beyond. Try and, try and just kind of pick up, at, at a minimum, pick up the area around you. Like that, I'll grab a little bag and, and grab some of the nastier stuff so it's not bare hands. And then this always pisses me off the most more than anything. Glass, glass bottles being uh, broken up. So, not a lot of idiots watch my videos. Like most of you guys are the good ones, but try to educate everyone else around you. If, if they're dumb, don't bring glass bottles. Like as a general rule, good not to bring glass bottles because sometimes they break and then they're even harder to clean up. So 
Yeah, all, I always have just extra, just like grocery bags. You know, you might not be able to do this in, in California or something. Colorado, actually, you gotta pay for these now too, so I can't talk, talk too much crap. And I like the earth, not that I'm against that. But, I grab these and can use these kind of as a glove or you can get regular gloves if you wanna pick up some nastier stuff like this. Who knows, maybe someone wiped their butt on it. I don't know, but moral of the story, pick up your trash. This is actually only five minutes, so it should be about ready. So I just have a short spoon here. When I don't have a long spoon, I like to just cut these bags a little shorter so they're easier. I bought Magna Cut should be able to handle this. We got a nice short bowl. Ah, nutrish and delish. So this setup wasn't wasn't bad at all. There's no wind. Uh, it was a little chilly last night, and the cover kind of almost acts as a reflector of the cold. I I don't know if that was in my head, but it felt like that was like radiating cold onto my face. So that was the only thing that was a little uncomfortable about the setup. Other than this, is a little firmer than I liked so couldn't get couldn't get super comfortable but the cardboard was nice uh, I basically had everything closed up tailgate closed up the tailgate key uh, it must sense you know like you you can't lock a key in the cab of a car with the key fob I couldn't open the tailgate with the key fob when I was in there so I don't know if that was just something weird going on or if that's by design, it might be by design, like I said. I had this one closed, tailgate closed, so it was just, and then I had this cracked, and it seemed fine. There wasn't really any condensation in there this morning when I woke up. This is just resting on, I lifted it and then basically closed the latch so that these are above the bed, and that was, that was pretty nice. I haven't done any work to seal my tailgate or anything in this. There's plenty of cracks and probably could have not cracked anything and there's enough tailgate breathing for it all. And then height was all right. You know, this is like someone sleeping under a topper on a platform, basically. Kind of similar, similar setup. And then like I mentioned last night, you can actually just open it from the inside so you can manipulate that there. And that manipulates the same as up here. So, setup wasn't too bad. Town's been tearing down for for a bit now, but that, that setup's not terribly hard to to set up. This is the worst part right here. Yeah, getting it back in the bag. He didn't stake anything out or anything. It wasn't really windy, so didn't need it. Uh, and basically, I'll probably just leave that bed in there and then pack my chair up and and call it good. Just been hanging out a bit. Tal and Uma, exposure's kind of crazy. Exposure's kind of crazy. Been hanging out for a bit. Talon is gonna hang behind and film a couple couple videos, but it's a good time. We talked, I forget, I always get confused when we're talking on Talon, Talon's camera or mine, but we've talked about doing a podcast for a long time. I don't, I don't think I've I talked about this on my channel. We talked about it for Talon's video, but every time we, we spend a lot of time hanging out in the mountains, especially, and sitting around the campfire, and then he gets to talking, he gets to talking about everything, everything. Life things, aliens, AI, business, trucks, future trucks, vans, outdoors, not, you know, everything. So it kind of is always good podcast material. So we've been talking about doing a podcast now for forever, for literally many years. Uh, I think we're gonna do one, just, we've done, we've, we've done like some other random podcasts together here and there. But Talon and I, the, the idea always was we would start basically a joint podcast. Talon has a podcast that he's kind of done on and off through the years. I never have. So we may just take over his old podcast and use that as our podcast or we may start a brand new thing 
And then we're just kind of curious if we should film it and put it on YouTube as well as the other podcasting platforms. And then just what kind of topics you would want. Podcasts, much like YouTube is, you do better. We'd be starting from scratch, obviously. You do better in an, in a niche. So you're talking, it's a podcast about guns, or it's a podcast about finance, or it's a podcast about current affairs, or whatever. But we, I don't know that we really fall into a specific niche, because we like to talk about everything. You know, the, the natural thing would be like off-roading or something, but that doesn't really define us and what we want to talk about. So, I don't know. Chime in down below on all podcast thoughts, like what you like about podcasts, what topics you'd like to cover, what you think our podcast should be called, should we just take over town's old podcast thing because that's all set up or start something new, do you want to see videos of, um, I don't know, whatever, any thoughts on podcasts because we're, ser we're serious about doing it, we're serious about doing it, so we think we're going to do it, doing it, and I am going to hit the road, I think town's not going to be too far behind me, but I'm gonna hit the road. I gotta go buy a car today, I think. Yeah. You'll find out more about that later. Yeah. Okay, well, I'll probably talk to you back in the driveway. See ya. Bye, Talon. Later. Goodbye. All right, guys, I'm back home now. It's a handful of days later, actually. Big, big updates. I mean, you know, it's a paved driveway, but this is huge for me. I was basically living in the mud for the last six months. Uh, granted, it hasn't been raining a ton, so it wasn't horrible, but paved driveway, amazing slab poured for the barn. This is actually going in in about a week or two the shell of the metal building structure. So some great changes. LX570, another change. I was gonna kind of do the driveway breakdown like I do at the end of a lot of Weekender Landers, but I decided I'm just gonna do a whole dedicated kind of winter truck gear video. I've done, I've done these a lot in the past. I always like to do them. I think a lot of you guys like to watch them. I like to make them. I like to watch them. I love gear. I love trucks. I love preparedness. So it kind of like combines all of my favorite things. So if things go as planned, this video will have just went live like a day prior. So the truck gear video should be live on my channel. I'll link it up here if I remember. Uh, and yeah, truck gear video. So that's it for this Weekender Lander. Most of my Weekender Landers are in the, the Tacoma. Look at, it, look at all this parking. Oh, it's so nice. Uh, so what that means is the Sequoia, if you're watching this immediately, it probably hasn't sold yet, but if you're in Colorado or, or beyond and interested in the Sequoia, let me know. Like recent maintenance done. Uh, it does have a rebuilt title and it's kind of a beater car or that's kind of, ha but it, it's solid. Everything is done to it. If you're looking for a 2007 Sequoia, little lift rack, like pretty dialed, weather techs, everything in there. Let me know immediately, because I'm gonna sell that soon. And then the reason is because I had an LX570 before and I honestly, I sold it because it was too nice and I bought the Sequoia, which really probably I should just keep because it's probably a better vehicle for how I use it. Uh, this is just like the family hauler now. This is my normal daily driver. 
This is when we need more space because I have the Tundra with the tiny back seat, the teeny, teeny, tiny back seat. But I just, I had the itch to build just a tank family rig. And so I got, this is an amazing deal I got on this, under 20 grand, 140,000 miles, pretty solid, recent radiator work done, not really any rust underneath, but somewhat beat up on the outside, which I don't care about, somewhat beat up on the inside, which I don't really care about. So it's like not as nice as the LX I had before. So it kind of fits into the, I won't care as much if my family kind of abuses it, but it has a more solid foundation than my last LX, fewer miles, nicer undercarriage. So I'm going to build this, not, you know, it's not going to be like an overland rig, but I'll put rack, bigger tires, potentially AHC lift, potentially bumpers, and just kind of, kind of dial that in. Okay. I thought this, I thought this video, I thought this outro to the weekend lander was not going to include all of that stuff, but that's that. If you're interested in the truck, uh, like what's in the truck, I just uploaded that video again. So check that out on the channel. And then this weekend Orlando was kind of fun. I mean, obviously Talon brought a bunch of junk and I, I wasn't, I really wasn't expecting that, but I, I, sh I should communicate with him better. And then maybe we could do a, a similar theme camping trip. Uh, we got winter coming up. We got snow. One of our plans is to just like, when a blizzard is coming, we just get out ahead of it and camp and get dumped on. So that's like an idea. If you have any other requests or videos that you really want to see concepts or just scenarios, let me know because I like, you know, it's nice to change things up. Like I have camping dialed in in the Tacoma and I love it and we'll do lots of that. But if there's like a specific thing you'd like to see, let me know. Maybe I'll do it. All right. As always, thumbs up, you know, you got thumbs up the videos, comment. Like, get subscribed if you're not. Other video ideas, always love to hear. Uh, probably do a house update soon with, you know, miscellaneous stuff that I've, that I've done. Sweet. All right, guys. Oh, I still do have my old Land Cruisers and the van and then and one more future project coming up. So I'll probably do just like a fleet update soon too. Maybe, I don't, I don't know, maybe. All right, see you guys. What do I say? As always, take care.